Drew Petzing in the 2023 Arizona Cardinals offense does not get enough credit. You are locked on Cardinals. Your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Locked on Cardinals, Alex Clancy here. Follow me on Twitter at Clancy's Corner. Follow the podcast at Locked on AZ Cards. Thank you for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen. Free wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Please go to the YouTube channel. Search Locked on Arizona Cardinals. Hit that subscribe button, man. Uh, You know, Google, Apple Podcasts. You want to leave a little review for me? Wouldn't be upset about it. Um. Yeah, got a lot to talk about today. This week is going to be really, really fun. It's going to be a fun set of podcasts. I've already got everything lined up. Have a uh, another listener viewer request for a segment that I'll kick off with tomorrow. Um, a gentleman from across the pond. Super excited to discuss that. You'll have to stay tuned. This episode of Locked On Cardinals is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get two hundred dollars in bonus bets if your first bet of five dollars or more wins visit fanduelcom slash locked on to get started uh so i started the last podcast episode with cliff kingsbury getting a job and while that's true the first segment of the last podcast ended up being um null and void because he and his genius agent eric burkhart withdrew from that position after not getting a three-year deal when they were being offered two. Uh, he is now the offensive coordinator for the Washington Commanders. $70 million in cap space, question mark at quarterback, a lot of holes to fill, and Cliff Kingsbury will be the signal caller for the Washington Commanders. And this is not going to be another segment like I did to start off last show because the redundancy is unnecessary, especially because Cliff hasn't been the head coach here for now over a year. But I've got into conversations on the Twitter uh, over the last couple days comparing Cliff Kingsbury to Drew Petzing and how Drew Petzing is looked at as a lesser than and Cliff Kingsbury. Revisionist history is a beautiful thing for content for me. Because the amount of people that forget what this offense looked like during the large portion of Cliff Kingsbury's tenure here and glorifying and, you know, Disney musicaling it to make it be a lot better than it was is fun for me. It's fun. I enjoy it because it makes me smile. I like things that make me smile. Uh, It makes me roll my eyes, which, you know, I like to do and just, bask in the glory of ineptitude from people who think that way. And that's great. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. A lot of times opinions are wrong. So pivoting to Drew Petzing, the difficult part about the transition was Cardinals didn't win a lot of games last year. And the Cardinals offense, by the dictionary definition of success, didn't succeed on offense more than they failed. And there is no world where I'd rather have Cliff Kingsbury calling the plays for the Cardinals over Drew Petzl. I've seen enough of both. And the issue I have with Cliff Kingsbury is he showed flashes. He showed promise. He had me jumping out of my seat probably... 20 times in four years where it's like, where the hell has that been? Maybe subtract the bubble screens and the go routes on third down and do more of that. The, Oh my God moments, as I call them. It's in there. It's between his ears. And we didn't see it nearly enough. So you can blame that on being the head coach also, which I, A hundred percent. There's credence in that. There's weight in that. So I hope Cliff Kingsbury succeeds in Washington having one job. Call the place. 
develop the quarterback, whoever it's going to be. That's it. And hopefully he thrives. Like, this is not like a – and another mis common misconception before I discuss Drew Petzing specific, specifically is this is not personal. <laughs> like, I don't think Cliff Kingsbury is bad. He's a nice dude. Interviewed him a few times. Was in a bunch of pressers. Like, he's, he's a nice guy. This is – if you want to call it an attack, I mean, attack is, come on. But this is uh, a sharp tongue thought process. Laser focused at the avatar that was the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals. This is never personal. Well, you must hate Clip. I don't, it doesn't mean anything to me. He means zero to me. So I feel like I, to, I haven't given that disclaimer in a while. So I felt like I needed to, I guess. So Drew Petson, let's pivot there. Drew Petson deserves more credit than, than, than he's gotten up until this point. What are the things that he didn't do well? One, second halves were tough during a large portion of the season. Um, I'm not... It was such a weird year where it's so much, uh, you know, the the prisoner of the situation where it wasn't a lot of talent. Uh, Joshua Dobbs was a, on the team for less than two weeks before starting and playing through first nine, ten, nine weeks. Kyler Murray comes back, didn't practice in this system. Okay, he had a couple weeks after being elevated from the pup list. He had three weeks to practice when everybody else had several months. I think they went three and five with Kyler. It's like, okay, there's two different ways to look at this. One, you let the numbers tell you what your eyes should have seen, which is ridiculous. There's room for analytics everywhere. I get it. It's it's elevated everything, okay? And it's the root of evil at times when people don't just use their damn eyeballs and see that something's different. It's not difficult. It's not difficult to see the differentiation between what Cliff Kingsbury did and what Drew Petson has done. Cliff Kingsbury was playing Madden. Drew Petson was running a big boy offense. I use the term proof of concept a lot to the brink of ad nauseum, but not. See, I think I just got lucky with that. Maybe I've made some people cute. Who knows? Thanks for listening. But, I, you know, when you look at it here, I was going to discuss this later in the week, but this is the perfect time. All you got to look, all you got to do is look at the scripted place. Cardinal scored myriad touchdowns, a bountiful amount of touchdowns. During the scripted plays this year, Cliff Kingsbury couldn't get out of his own way during scripted plays when he was here for four seasons. If you can't script 15 plays in a week of prep time, especially with how much time he was in the facility, first one in, last one out, what are you playing solitaire in there? That's that. The things you have control over. If you can't put those together, Drew Petzing did. That's the differentiation between a good play caller, regardless of talent, and one that isn't as good. Bingo. Locked on Cardinals, your team every day. Alex Clint here. Uh, please go to the YouTube channel, search Locked on Arizona Cardinals, hit the subscribe button. Uh, past 3,000 followers a couple weeks ago, numbers are continuing to go up. And it's not for me. I don't care about seeing the amount of people. I just, I want to connect with as many people as I can. And I am working, and I'm working on uh, a different way to contact. I had a, a listener uh, DM me and said that they couldn't, um, couldn't DM me on Twitter unless you paid for Twitter blue or whatever it is. Uh, I didn't know that. I thought that I just had my DMs open. Everybody could, could reach out. So um, I'm working on something else now to be able to contact because I, you know, the interaction is, is what, it, you know, what I love. So um, just stay tuned on that. We've got a long off season and I will have something in place soon. I promise free agent options for wide receivers. I mean, there is a lot. 
We'll discuss that next. We were all on here. Locked on Cardinals, your team every day. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by DoorDash. Um, so, did you know, did the game go to timeout? Halftime, something like that. It's time to order in with DoorDash. You know, it, it makes ingesting food and drinks so much easier when you're watching the game. It allows for a wide range of options that aren't just like traditional places that deliver. You can order pizza, wings, soda, burgers, or even just, you know, just buns on DoorDash and get it all delivered without missing the game. Like all of your favorite restaurants and stores from retail to grocery are on the app. So you can shop everything you need to get game day ready. I mean, big games coming up, man. DoorDash can be one of your best friends. Get 50% off up to $10 value when you spend 15 bucks or more on your first order. When you download the DoorDash app and enter code LOCK23. Subject to change, terms do apply. But that's 50% off up to $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. When you download the DoorDash app and enter code LOCK23. Subject to change, terms apply this episode of locked on cardinals is also brought to you by ebay motors passion drive and patience what's bring what brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive ebay motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance and superchargers roof racks exhaust kits led headlights and more whether you're into speed power or style ebay motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts if you're number one ride or die you'll always have and find exactly what you're looking for and with ebay guaranteed fit your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available for U.S. customers. Alex Nancy, Locked on Cardinals. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you for making Lockdown Cardinals your first listen free wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Lockdown has launched its first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Lockdown Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Lockdown, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Lockdown Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel wide receivers this is going to be really really fun to experience this offseason okay and i'm <laughs> i'm not ready yet i'm not ready yet but there is going to come a time very soon where i'm going to succumb to who the cardinals should take at number four overall or who they will take because you know I don't say things just to hear myself talk. I don't, I'm not like, ooh, that'll piss people off. Let's discuss that. Oh, let's let's do some counter-programming. I believe everything that I say, for better or worse. And I have a pretty good track record, regardless of what people want to believe. But I know when it's time to to cash in and you know move away from, from a thought process because the chance of it happening is infinitesimal compared to what, you know, it, it was, uh, you know, a couple of months ago. So, um, yeah, hold on for that. But when it comes to the wide receiver position, this is – so Ari Mayra, friend of the show, um, at uh, 3013 My Sports Update on Twitter, one of the best – see, there's a, a lot of people who, you know, are aggregators who aren't very good at what they do. They just rip stuff off other people. And twist words and things like that. Ari Mayorov doesn't do that. Ari Mayorov is a very smart guy, uh, puts out really great content, and um, I'll be having him on this uh, this offseason. Uh, but he put up a list of wide receivers that are going to be available this offseason, and there's a couple different ways the Cardinals could go. And so the two top guys are T. Higgins and, and, uh, and Michael Pittman Jr., okay? And both of whom are looking for that – you know, big payday. And if the Cardinals do in fact draft Marvin Harrison Jr., that's not even close to the 
amount of talent that they're going to have to add. I mean, their wide receiver group, especially if they move off from Hollywood Brown, which I would assume they will, th- there needs to be more talent in there. So there's a couple different ways they can go. One, you go out and get a big guy. You have a one-two punch for the next five years. They've got you know $40 million to spend. You, you can get, I mean, the salary cap's a lie. Thank you, Aaron Freeman, Locked on Falcons. That's that's his line, and it's true. You, know, you can make anything work. Um, and I think there's a better way to do it. Okay, so I'm looking at this like, okay, so you can get T. Higgins, and you're like, okay, so you got your guy on the outside. you got two big receivers that, you know, are going to be the guys. And I don't think that's money well. That would be money well spent. There are a couple other guys you can go and get because I'd much rather the Cardinals have Marvin Harrison Jr. We don't know what his grade is going to be. If you think that you know, just he's going to be a rookie. Okay, is he going to be great? Maybe is he is he going to be a good wide receiver? We have no idea. Okay, do you want to get an A receiver alongside him, or two to three B slash B minus receivers who haven't really gotten a shot elsewhere? And I would go for the latter. Now there is a couple guys that I see on this list that I think would be fascinating, okay? One of them, and the first one, is Tyler Boyd, okay? So Tyler Boyd's 29 years old. Tyler Boyd has been that Marvin Jones third wheel, Harry Douglas third wheel in Cincinnati pretty much forever. The way you can determine if a guy can ball when he gets the opportunity is when one of those top receivers gets hurt. And whenever Jamar Chase or T. Higgins would get hurt, Tyler Boyd, he's a fantasy fantasy football darling. People have him on their bench for when a top receiver gets hurt. And he comes out and he performs really well. So if you have him as a kind of fringe number two, where Trey McBride and Marvin Harris Jr. could be the one and two if they draft Marvin Harrison Jr. But Trey McBride as the wide receiver two, I think it would be a fantastic signing. I think, and this is, you know, pending Cincinnati letting him go. There's going to be a lot of changes with a lot of, with a lot of teams who got, who got to work things out. But I think I'd rather look at a guy like that. And if you play fantasy football, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and he's a guy that I would hundred percent, you know, look and see how much, you know, how much he would cost and things like that for a contract. I mean, let me just go down this list. I mean, there's a lot, and there's a lot of guys that, you know, you kind of want to stay away from, but, T. Higgins, Michael Pittman, Mike Evans, Calvin Ridley, Gabe Davis, Darnell Mooney, Michael Thomas, Tyler Boyd, uh, Hollywood Brown, OBJ, KJ Osborne, Josh Reynolds, DJ Chark, Curtis Samuel, Chase Claypool, Noah Brown, LaVisca Chanel, Braxton Berrios, Demarcus Robinson, Kendrick Bourne, Nick Westbrook, Akine, Van Jefferson, Chris Moore, Nelson Aguilar, Quez Watkins, Olamade Zacchaeus, Cedric Wilson, Paris Johnson, Donovan Peoples Jones, Equimania St. Brown, Trent Sherfield, uh, former Cardinal, Jamal Agnew, Devin Duvernay, Lil Jordan Humphrey. So, you know, a lot of these guys are, are not going to be difference makers. 80% of that list isn't going to be difference makers. But you've got guys, and, you know, Josh Reynolds didn't have a great NFC Championship game, but he's been fine. Um, you know, like these guys, Noah Brown is a young receiver. I don't know if if uh, if Houston will let him go or if Dallas will let him go. Houston will let him go. Um, I, I'm not sure. Um, you know, Van Jefferson is interesting. Demarcus Robinson's interesting. Uh, Cedric Wilson was I, I had a I had a huge crush on Cedric Wilson when he was in Dallas. He hasn't done much in in Miami, but there's like seven guys ahead of him. Like that's the kind of thing um, where it's like, are these guys just buried on the depth chart? Or are they actually able to perform? And then it's like, well, I mean, they wouldn't be buried on the depth chart if they were able to perform. And I don't know if that's always the case. Some guys just need a fresh start with a lot more targets than they have now, and we'll see. So I'd much rather them sign two of those guys and spend 80% of their free agent money on the defense than go and sign Michael Pittman Jr. And Michael Pittman Jr., Pro Football Focus and elsewhere, has uh, has targeted the Cardinals as, as a team where he could land. And I just – he's he's a good receiver. You know, he's fringe great receiver. I don't think that that's the best – way to allocate funds when you have no pass rush, no interior of the defensive line, and no corners. That's just me. Locked on Cardinals, your team every day. I'm going to do a little bit different of a mock draft Monday today. Um, I'm not, I didn't do a mock draft. I I think like it's fun, but they're going to be repetitive. And we have so much time that I think we can go more theory based here than actually, Oh, Marvin Harris, you do four. Sweet. Now what? Like 
mock drafts are great, but if you do them every week, I just, especially if it's only two rounds, it's going to get redundant. And I don't want any sort of redundancy before the 2023-2024 NFL season, Roger Goodell, hyphenate it, uh, ends. I feel like that's too early when, when the draft isn't until April. I'll discuss that in more Locked On Cardinals, your team every day. This episode of Locked On Cardinals is brought to you by FanDuel. Happy Super Bowl to all those who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sports program. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and placing some super bets. Uh, you know, like the commercials are great, um, but, you know, it's like I'm such a nerd when it comes to the Super Bowl. Like I will be with a couple friends, but I don't want to go to massive parties. I want to watch the damn game. You know, and FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with a W or two or three. And not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets for which player will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, etc. New customers, join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Final segment, Locked on Cardinals, Alex Clancy here. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, please go to the YouTube channel, search Locked on Arizona Cardinals. Hit that subscribe button, man. Um, please, you know, you can leave a like on the video, leave a comment. Um, Every dayers, I appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, whether you've been here since 2017 or this is your first listen, thank you. Um, I'm... You know, I'm so close to just throwing in the towel. There's just so much throwing in the towel, not for this, for my thoughts with the number four overall pick. As we pivot here to a, you know, pseudo mock draft Monday, I think it's just, you know, this will be the pillar from here through the draft. So it doesn't always have to be mock drafts. It's kind of, this is kind of a mock draft theory. I'm so close to just being like, all right, fine. But then... If, but like it's, it, it's got to come with the prerequisite that if somebody doesn't take Marvin Harrison Jr. first, we have no idea what's going to happen. Maybe Caleb Williams pulls, you know, pulls a Bo Callahan and the, the Bears stick with Justin Fields. They draft Marvin Harrison Jr. number one overall. Would that be crazy? Like, here's the thing. And this is why I ask people think for yourself. Okay. Think for yourself. If like, and I, I'm not saying think for yourself and then and then agree with me. Not not even close. I you know, irrespective of what I think for yourself, like Caleb Williams isn't. There's no such thing as a sure thing. Okay, there's no such thing as the sure thing in the NFL. Trevor Lawrence was supposed to be, and still can be, but. Contract negotiations, they a sure thing that they're going to just give him the house. He was supposed to be the most transcendent prospect since Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck came in. Andrew Luck threw – like, if it, I wish Andrew Luck was still playing so we could really know. But the dude really, really – God, it showed so much greatness, Andrew Luck. Um, Peyton Manning couldn't win a playoff game, couldn't win a Super – like, it was – it. It's a different thing, okay? So with that, and the Cardinals aren't going to be drafting the quarterback, so with that, anything's possible. If they see Marvin Harrison Jr. as the guy and they like a quarterback coming out next year, crazier things have happened. But say the Cardinals, say it goes three quarterbacks in a row, which, you know, pretty much is, is, is you know, commonplace now. The Cardinals draft Marvin Harrison Jr. Fine. What happens at 27 is going to be the – it's going to lay the groundwork for the game plan for Monty Austin for, for the rest of the draft. Because at 27, I'm sure he'll have his big board. He'll have his list of guys that if these three, four, five guys end up falling, you take one of them, depending on position, whatever it is. Interior defensive line, offensive line, corner, whatever it is. 
having four picks after 27 in the second and third round, if Monty Osford decides to trade up from 27, if he decides to trade back down from 27, it doesn't matter how many spots. Trade up, you lose picks. Trade down, you gain picks. Simple as that. Is this a quality or quantity draft? Because the Cardinals need quantity on their roster. How many guys, like this is one of my most fun exercises to do mentally. When I ask my buddies, like uh, Bo Brock, you know, one of my, he's still, yeah, Bo and I are still friends. So <laughs> believe it or not, even though he's, you know, as uh, not smart as ever. No, Bo's, Bo's my boy. Um, it's always how many players are going to be on this roster who ended the 2023 season with this team? 20? Like maybe less? Like this is going to be a massive overhaul. So obviously you want quality and quantity. That's ideal where you draft all these players and they all pan out. I mean, that's obviously the, the dream. But what does Monty think? Do you want to go get your two or three top players on your board and kind of figure out the rest? Or are you cool with moving back from 27, picking up maybe a second round, an extra second round pick this year? So you have five picks in the second and third round and still maybe get one of the guys on your board at 30 or 31. Like 27 is such an interesting spot. And I know it's not ideal. I know you, you know, kind of wished Houston would have won two games this year. I get it. And that's why I always say you have no idea what's going to happen next year. Control what you can control, and thank you, Matt Prater, for missing that kick in Week 18. Because picking five and picking four, if the Cardinals like the Cardinals should count should count their lucky stars. If the Cardinals were picking five, ain't no way they were getting Marvin Harrison Jr. No way. The Chargers would have lapped that up. That lapped that choice up. There was no way he was getting past four. So Cardinals are lucky. Eh. Not so lucky that Houston ended up being a very good team this year, winning a division. Like, it was not ideal. But the Cardinals still can get their guy. So what happens at 27, that is going to be the litmus test for the rest of the draft. Litmus test. I don't think that's right. That's going to be the determining factor on what the rest of the draft, in the top three rounds at least, will look like. If Monte Alistair wants to trade back, that means he'll most likely be very active in those second third. If they draft at 27 and they draft at the top of the second round, the only thing I could see is that, like, the only thing I do know, I do know, the only thing I would be very, very surprised in watching is them actually drafting with those three third round picks, all three of them. There's a big gap. Between the second and third round, there's a whole lot of picks. So if he wants to take two of those and move up into the middle of the second round, maybe give him a future, you know, a future third and a third this year or whatever it is, like there's two different ways. I'll leave you with this. There's two different ways this draft can go. Pretty much. I mean, the draft is obviously, you know, it's 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 the wild, it's insane. But the way I see it is there's two different ways the draft can go. You know, you pick it for whoever they pick it for. You pick at 27, you pick in the second round, and then you do something with two of those three third-round picks, whether it be trade up or trade for a player or trade back or trade for future future picks. Or pick it for whoever it is, and then you move from 27 up or back, and then all bets are off for the rest of the second and third round. They can have more movement than any team in the, in the NFL for the draft. We have no idea. It's going to be like – it's moving around is fun. It's, oh, it's, oh, they traded up. Oh, they traded back. What are they getting? Like, it's exciting. And they still need to execute on those picks. So with, unlike Steve Keim, you trust, at least for now, Monty Osworth's ability to draft the with the bountiful amount of picks they have instead of being like, yeah, Steve Keim, maybe take all those three picks, move up and just draft one person. Because the chance of you missing on, the chance of you missing skyrockets when you have more picks that's not this 27 is going to be the pivotal decision that Monty Arthur will make that will map the rest of the draft and damn it I wish it was tomorrow locked on Cardinals your team every day without you there is no me remember that I'll talk to you tomorrow